Hello, you're watching Gary TV English News Broadcast live from our headquarters in Asmara. I'm Han Barhat. Let's first look at the top stories that are making headlines today. Gary Trail to participate at Africa Cycling Championship. Eyeglass Manufacturing Plant. Russia and Ukraine looking for compromise in peace talks. Dozens of Palestinians hurt in confrontation with Israeli forces in northern West Bank. Eritrea's national cycling team is set to participate at Africa's championship to be held in Sharm al-Sheikh, Egypt, from 22 to 27 March. According to Mr. Gabriel Saeed Damir, public relations officer of the National Cycling Federation, Eritrea will participate at the championship in both genders and in the elite as well as under 23 categories. The national cycling team will participate at the team time trail individual chronometer and mixed relay as well as in the road race. The national team composing 30 members will depart to Egypt on 20 March. Beneficiaries reported that the eyeglass manufacturing plant of the National Association of Eritrean War Disabled Veterans is supplying competitive eyeglasses with fair price, indicating that they are finding prescribed eyeglasses with fair prices from the plant. The beneficiaries called for providing due to attention for expanding the plant and enable produce more and provide its products to the wider public pointing out that the plant started producing eyeglasses in 2009 with small scale, Mr. Tesfai Gabriesus, head of the plant, said that currently the plant is providing eyeglasses to citizens outside members of the war disabled veterans. Mr. Munil Abdul Wahab, technician at the plant on his part, said that the, with the support of members of the National Association in Europe, the plant is introducing modern equipment from time to time with a view to expand its products and increase supply of the eyeglasses to the public. Since its establishment in 2009, the plant has produced and supplies over 18,000 eyeglasses to beneficiaries with fair price. The Minister of Labour and Social Welfare branch in the Southern Red Sea region extended material support to disadvantaged women indicating that the support is in continuation that the Minister of Labour and Social Welfare is extending with a view to improve the livelihoods of disadvantaged citizens. Mr. Yosef Sahaye, head of the branch office, said that the support has been extended to disadvantaged women that were provided three months training in beauty salon, pointing out that the branch office has been extending support to disadvantaged women that are shouldering the responsibility of raising children, Mr. Hamid Ali, Director General of Social Services in the region, called on the trainees to take advantage of the opportunity they were provided. The head of the National Union of Eritrean Women, Ms. Sa Saadia Ibrahim, and the head of the National Union of Eritrean News and Students, Mr. Osman Abdul Qader, on their part, said that the strong effort will be exerted to develop the vocational capacity of women in the region. We will be back with international news. Thanks. Stay tuned. Russia and Ukraine both emphasized newfound scope for a compromise. On Wednesday, as peace talks were set to resume three weeks into Russian assault that has so far failed to topple the Ukrainian government. Ukraine's president said the talks were becoming more realistic, while Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said there was some hope for a compromise with neutral status for Ukraine a major Russian demand now on the table. Three weeks into the invasion, Russian troops have been halted, having taken heavy losses and failed to seize any Ukraine's biggest cities in a war. Western officials say Moscow thought it would win within days. Ukrainian officials have expressed hope this week that the war could end sooner than expected, even within weeks as Moscow was coming to service with a lack of fresh troops to keep fighting. 
talks were due to resume on Wednesday by video link for what would be a third straight day, the first time they have lasted for more than a single day, which both sides have suggested means they have entered a more serious phase. Dozens of Palestinians have been injured after Israeli police stormed the northern part of the West Bank amid renewed tensions over the Israeli military's killing of three young Palestinians across the occupied territories. Local sources said clashes broke out between Palestinians and Israeli troops after settlers stormed Joseph's tomb on the outskirts of the occupied West Bank city of Nablus, desecrating the site venerated by Jews, Christians and Muslims. Hundreds of settlers arrived at the site on board a number of buses on Tuesday evening and broke into the tomb amid protection by Israeli troopers. Violence erupted when Palestinians engaged in the clashes with Israeli troopers who fired rubber-coated steel bullets, stun grenades and tear gas canisters to disperse the protesting crowd. A number of Palestinians were struck with the rubber bullets. Several others suffered chest tightness, coughing, and a choking sensation as they had been ex exposed to tear gas fired by Israeli forces. Before we close for today's news, let's have a recap of the headlines tonight. Eritrea to participate at Africa Cycling Championship. Eyeglass Manufacturing Plant Russia and Ukraine looking for compromise into peace talks Dozens of Palestinians are hurt in confrontation with Israel forces That was all for today's news, thanks for watching, have a great night